Allora, benvenuti a tutti. Cosa intendi? Ridurla così. Posto così. Benvenuti a tutti. Eh, questa è un'introduzione a ECE, il corso in Electronics and Communication Engineering. In questa particolare sessione eh, svolgeremo l'introduzione in inglese. So let me switch to English. Uh, the reason is because this bachelor is completely offered in English. You'll see more detail in the following. Now I let uh, my colleague, Professor Poggiolini, to introduce uh, Uh, with, I'll say, appeals with a specific uh, topic that is one of the possible application of uh, an electronic and communication engineer. And then I will give uh, an introduction more detailed on the, on the topic, on the study plan of the course. Okay, so let's uh, start. Okay, hope you can hear me and everything is going to go according to plans, hopefully. All right, so thanks for being here. Good morning, everyone. This presentation is about electronics and communications engineering. Um, however, actually, what I'm gonna try to give you is a glimpse of one, of one cool technology that you might learn about, you would learn about if you enrolled in electronics and, com and computer and communications engineering, and then you went on to a master in either electronics or communications or other masters related. All right, so you come to university. University is the place of exams, of tests, of quizzes. So I have this like introduction to my presentation, which is a pop quiz, okay? So, um, so what, what, what is this all about? Well, I'm gonna ask you this simple question. Let's see if we can answer it together. How is information carried from Europe to US and vice versa? And by information, what I mean is pictures, audio, video, files, email, gigabytes, petabytes, but all the stuff that goes back and forth an enormous amount of data. All right, so how does it actually make it across the ocean? I'll give you four alternatives and then you vote, all right? Over Wi-Fi. You know, there are gazillions of these devices all over. I mean, they, they probably talk to one another and little by little the data jumps and maybe propagates and then it makes it across the ocean. I don't know. Well, okay. Let's look at another one. Cell phone base stations. Now these are big towers, right? Um, with lots of antennas on, on top of them. So they talk to one another maybe, and uh, they're tall, so maybe they can see across the ocean and make it across, I don't know. Next, this is satellite. Oh, this, this is cool, right? You have a big fat uh, base station on one side, then this beams up the data to a big fat satellite, then it comes down to another big fat ground station and vice versa, so this makes a lot of sense, right? This is certainly an option. And finally, it's fiber optic cables. Optical fibers are these thin strands of glass, very delicate, very fragile. They would have to go thousands of kilometers across the ocean. Uh, light would have to propagate across thousands of kilometers and make it to the other side, so I don't know. Anyway, A, B, C, D. What do you think? Who, who votes for A? Okay, one vote for A. Who votes for B over cell phone base stations? I didn't convince you about that. Okay. How about uh, over satellite links? One, two, three, four. All right. More? No. All right. And finally, over optical fibers. All right. Okay. So these guys, the last ones who voted, are actually right. Surprising as it may be. 99% of the traffic from US to Europe and vice versa, 99% or more actually travels over optical fibers. In fact, we can globalize this and say that across the whole world, 99% uh, of intercontinental internet traffic goes over undersea cables. There's 430 of them. That's amazing. That's the technology. Okay. And Now my presentation proper that's called 20,000 fibers under the sea. 
All right, and I'm gonna get started now with this little movie, if it starts, that kind of shows you, well, I'm gonna watch 30 seconds of it, um, where these cables go, right? Let's start from the US. And you can see the cables that start here. And these are actual cables. These are actual cables. This is not fictional. These are actual cables that go across the ocean, that make it to, to Europe and vice versa. Then you see cables that go over the North Sea, the Baltic. There are smaller cables in the Baltic. There are smaller cables, but still long in the Mediterranean. Some of them go through the Suez Canal down the Arabian Peninsula and then over to the Persian Gulf. And then, uh, you know, there's, there's one cable or more cable that actually go down the coast of Africa and they make some landings and they keep going and going. These are all fiber optic cables. You can watch this video, you can find it on YouTube and enjoy it while it goes all around the world. Or if you're interested, um, hopefully this is gonna take us to the next slide. Uh, okay. Um, otherwise, if you're interested, you can actually click on here, www.submarinecablemap.com. Very easy to remember, submarine cable map. If you click on this, this is the reference website for all submarine optical cables. These are the trans-Pacific ones. These are the transatlantic ones. You can zoom in on them. Each one of them is an optical cable. For instance, this one, let me see if I can get it. The Maria cable or Marea cable that uh, came into service in 2018. That's a big one and a very high performance one. So actually, let's go to our presentation and take a look at this Maria cable. It actually goes from Bilbao in Spain to Virginia Beach in the US. It's 6,600 kilometers. It contains 16 optical fibers. Eight fibers go one way and eight fibers go the other way. And the total capacity of this cable is just mind boggling. It's 160 terabit per second. That's 160 million megabit per second. That's incredible. But how much is that? Well, I'll get there again by the end of the presentation. But here's how is this cable actually laid out on, actually laid down on the top of, on the bottom of the, of the sea. Um, it's interesting to see what they do. You know, there are these big ships that have these like drums where fiber is coiled. And there are actually, here's a, here's a close up, um, many thousand turns of cables. I, I mean, one, one ship can load like a couple of thousand kilometers. There are bigger ships that load multiple thousand kilometers and then the ship goes and it drops it off the stern of, of the boat. Okay, so that's uh, one little glimpse. Now, we're still at university, so hey, another pop quiz. Let's see if this one is successful. Now, the question is really easy this time. Which one of these cables is meant for ultra deep seas? What do I mean ultra deep sea? Well, when you drop off the cable and it makes it down to the bottom of the sea, it can be like six or seven kilometer underwater. That's hundreds of atmospheres of pressure that crush the cable. So which one is the one that is used for ultra deep? Is it the... The one to the right, the lightweight, or it's the lightweight armored though, or the single armor or the double armor. What do you think? Is it D? Hmm? Is it uh, C? Or is it A? Who votes for A? Okay, it makes a lot of sense, right? But no, it's not true. This is the one that goes all the way down to the bottom. Well, why is it so though? I mean, it makes so much sense that it is the double armor. Well, because the armoring really what, what, what it does, it defends the cable against human activity. This is used actually onshore and in shallow waters or relatively shallow waters because the, the biggest threat is actually fishing. You know, trawler boats and the, the pesca strashico and stuff like that, and all, all sorts of human activities. So you really have to, you know, armor the cable in, in order to prevent or bad stuff from happening. Okay, so, but where's the fiber? Well, the fibers are these like barbs here. In fact, let's look at this other picture. The fibers are just these tiny strands here. And now I'm gonna focus, zoom in on just the fiber. We're gonna look at one of these fibers. 
Here it is, zoomed up. Now, this is about um, a quarter of a millimeter. It's very thin. And the first layer is just plastic. Then you have the glass, that's the actual fiber. It's the size of a human hair, about one eighth of a millimeter. But the light, the hundreds of gigabits and terabits per second, actually it flows here in the tiny core. You know, laser light is shown in, uh, into the fiber and modulated, okay? It's not just on off, it's more complicated, but you know, that, that's the idea and that encodes the data and then zoom, it starts and it travels to the, as far as it can go. In fact, uh, people have been, engineers have been very clever, not just one laser shown, shines into the fiber, multiple lasers with different colors in order to be able to distinguish between them that are individually and independently modulated. So more data on a single fiber. Okay, so I'm almost to the end, some random fun facts about this. I said different colors, right? How many colors? Do you have any idea? Well, anyone wants to try? It's actually a hundred, about a hundred different lasers converge into a single fiber under different colors. How many times per second is each laser modulated? 10, 100, 1,000, 100,000. Anyone wants to try? It's actually, oops, from 30 to 100 billion times per second, because if you wanna carry the gigabits, the terabits, then you have to be very fast. How transparent is fiber optic glass? I mean, if you look at conventional glass and you go through and you see through like, I don't know, 10 centimeters of glass, the, la the light starts to dim, you see it kind of greenish. Imagine looking through a meter of glass, you probably wouldn't be able to see anything. Now, fiber optic glass is so transparent that if you look through a hundred kilometer solid glass, you will still see through to the other side. That's how transparent it is to transmit light. And finally, how many 4K video streams can be carried by a single submarine cable like the Maria cable, 160 terabit per second, how many of those it is? It's a staggering 20 million 4K uh, video simultaneous. That's Amazing. Anyway, what will you learn at ECE? Well, if you do ECE, you will learn all you need to know to go on to a master in communications engineering, for instance. And in that master, you will learn how fiber optic telecommunication systems work. Or if you do electronics, then you can learn about components uh, that are used in, uh, in these systems and so on. You will also get ready to work or do research in this field and job-wise, I need to tell you, Jobs is incredible. I mean, companies can't find enough of you. Um, there's an incredible shortage of skilled manpower. So the likes, giants the likes of Huawei, Nokia, Cisco, and many other, no problems finding a job right after the degree. And so, yes, what it lies silently under high seas, these like ultra long contraption that ensnare the whole world, but they're not monsters, they're optical fibers and we cannot do without them. That's the real backbone, the actual backbone of the internet. Okay, thanks for your, thanks for your attention. All right. Well, thank you, Patrick, for this uh, interesting presentation about uh, the special mission Continue specifically in communication engineering because this is a part of the communication more than of the electronics track. Now I will move to the second part that is entitled smartphone anatomy. So I will use another application that is the device that everyone has in his pocket, the smartphone, to link to what you will learn in case you enroll in electronic and communication engineering. So if I could open and blow up completely my smartphone, today is almost impossible because in the past you could open up some, at least some of the components, the channel button now is glued, you can do anything. You could see tens of 
components, subsystem, and system. Now, let me highlight some of them. So, what's in that smartphone? There are circuit board, flexible circuit boards, microprocessor, central processing units, graphical processing units, even system on a chip, memory, battery, display, camera, many cameras, likely, modem, that is the communication part, modulator and demodulator, this is an acronym, antennas, we'll see many antennas, and different sensors, accelerometer, gyroscope, fingerprint, barometer, thermometer, even other, depends on which level of smartphone you are considering. Now let's group them in category. So let's look at electronic circuits and devices. Circuit board, microprocessor, memory, sensors. I try to select a picture that highlight what they are. What is the knowledge base that you should acquire if you want to study, design, test them? You need to know about circuit theory and applications. You need to know about electronic devices, there are many. Electronic circuits to connect them, apply electronics to have some specific application, electronic measurement to test after you design and you build it, and then to consider digital system electronic because, as you could imagine, everything is digital. It's about digital electronics, not analog. There are analog applications in other fields, but not for sure in a, in a smartphone. And then another group is the communication devices. But you see, these are the E and C in electronic and communication engineering. And in particular, you have modems and antennas. I told you many antennas. They are quite difficult. It's not like this device and all smartphones where the antenna is external. The antenna are inside. There are small circuits that work as antenna, 5G antenna, Wi-Fi antenna, Bluetooth antenna, NFC antenna, the one that you use to pay. Uh, I don't know, other antenna, there are many. Again, depends also on, on, on the smartphone that you are considering. And which is the knowledge base? Electromagnetic waves antenna, how the, the, the RF field propagates and the antenna itself works. Signal and system, because you transmit signal with antenna, so you need to know the theory of signal and system. Digital transmission, because as I said, we transmit digital information. Communication network, how the device talk to the, to, the, to the base station and to other device in case of better connection, applied signal processing technology and digital communication. Do we have forgotten something? Yes, because everything that I considered as the main blocks are the hardware blocks, what is really inside the phone. But there is also the intangible software that is fundamental. Without the software, it's just a piece of, uh, material that doesn't come to life. So the software is an operating system, iOS, Android, or others, and many, many, many apps that give you the, the possibility to, to really use it. So now, and the knowledge base related to this is the world of computer science and the world of algorithm and programming. So how to know what to do and the language that you apply to implement it. Now let's put all together. This is what you learn in nature. And all the names that are used in the knowledge base are not just selected like that, but they are actual courses in ECE. So circuit theory in the application, it's a course. Electronic device, it's a course and so on. And here I also colored them by area. Red is the area of electronics. Green is the area of communication. Blue is the area of software. And then the yellow area I added, they are not inside the phone, but you need to learn also some foundational courses, math, algebra, analysis, geometry, physics, and one course in chemistry. Let's organize, and this is the study plan. Uh, if you stop up to, to buy our boot, you can also take it. There is also a QR code and my, my contact. You see, it's organized over three years as a bachelor. The first year is mainly occupied by yellow foundational courses, but there is also one characterizing course, communication network. So since the first year, you will learn something specific in the area of communication. 
And then there are red courses that are the electronics with a mix of other green. There are some free courses. There is the possibility also to do an internship. I didn't put here, it's another option. In the third year, you can uh, swap some courses like the free courses for an internship in a company. And if you have a question, uh, you can ask at the end of my presentation. This is the full recipe organized uh, to show you the amount of each section. Obviously there is about one third, the first year more or less of foundational courses, math, physics, and chemistry. Uh, there is less about, let's say one fourth of electronics and then 15% communication and software. And with the other courses, the free courses, you can, let's say, move a little more toward electronics or toward communication by properly selecting your, your free choices. If you want, you can do an applied signal laboratory uh, course or a digital transmission course, digital communication laboratory course that moves toward the green, or you select a more electronic course and you get a more uh, 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 higher focus on electronics. So to give some other information about the DC Bachelor, it's an innovative degree that we started seven years ago in 2015. It's completely taught in English, and this is the reason also why we are introducing it in English. And uh, it has a class of international students. We started with 30%, but now we are constantly every year around 50%. So this is also a good thing because you have a mix of students coming from different area of the world. We have a very good uh, ranking, actually Polito by itself is the top 10% in these uh, four university rankings. These are the number of 2010 in this week, they released the 2022. We are even getting two position better, 43 out of 500 in the electrical and electronic engineering, that is the area where EC lies. And also uh, as a student appreciation, we have a 91% of students that after completing the degree, they say they would repeat it. So they are happy with uh, the study plan and with the experience at Polito. The EC Bachelor is an interdisciplinary education in the field of ICT. ICT covers all the techniques needed to store, retrieve, manipulate, transmit and receive information, electronic and in digital form. It's a pervasive uh, application that connects our society. You can think from the internet to the smartphone to the fiber optics. So there are different applications, different way to say spend your, your bachelor. Oops, sorry. In fact, uh, I listed here some other application, not just the smartphone, the smartphone is one possible device where you have many of these electronic communication application put together. There are fiber optic and photonics. You just saw the presentation about the undersea cable that is a niche application, but there are fibers everywhere terrestrial. You probably even have fiber at your home if you have a good internet connection. There are applications in the field of electronic circuit system for home automation microprocessor integrated architecture for high performance computing. There is a lot of application in the signal and image processing, for example, for video games or medical equipment, artificial intelligence, using autonomous, autonomous vehicles, and also computer communication networks used in data centers. The approach that we use it to build and create this uh, bachelor program is to have an hands on whatever is possible you will put your hands on. It means laboratory, it means the internship, if you want to do it in the third year. And if you account for all the lab that we have along the three year, in the second and third year, more than one fifth, 20% is really hands on. It could be hardware lab, like the LED, Laboratorio Electronica Didattica, or computer lab, where you go to design or program components and systems. We have mobility program. In particular, I highlight these two. The Politon, that is a double degree with a Chinese university in Tongji. And the SECU program, where you spend one semester in the third year 
in a series of universities that are called SEC, so Southern Conference. It's in the south of the US. There are many professional profiles that can be targeted by a bachelor, uh, a graduated in, in SE. I have to admit that most of our students, I have a slide later, will continue in a, in a, in a master. So there are some possibility to work as a telecommunication system manager, as a digital signal processing system designer, or a junior ICT designer, or junior engineer expert, because company can also have this uh, job availability. But uh, to be honest, most of our students go beyond ECE, and also um, they have the opportunity to be enrolled in, uh, not just in Polito, unfortunately for us, but in very uh, high reputation university across Europe. So it's a well uh, high reputation title. 87% of our students continue their education in a master. What we have as a, let's say, track that could follow, naturally follow the bachelor in ECE are the master in communication engineering, the master in ICT for my society that are in the area of telecommunication. One more on the technology side, communication engineering, that is a brand new master that will start in 2022-23, so this year. While the second one, ICT in Smart Society, is more on the application side. So one on technology, one is an application. Or you can bend toward electronic engineering that is the other of the two, say, focus area of EC. You can also access without any, let's say, depth, any extra courses required, other uh, master at Polito, like mechatronics, biomedics. So there are several openings after you complete EC, because being interdisciplinary, it opens you different possibilities. So to summarize, before I conclude, what are the EC strengths? It's an interdisciplinary program that opens many opportunities, as I said, many master and many job that you could uh, target. It's completely taught in English, and you'll be ready for a job in ICT that is completely, typically uh, pervaded by English. You must know English as a, let's say, first language. We uh, have an hands-on approach, so you will learn by doing whatever is possible. And we have a small class of students. We have 110 seats. So this allows a strong and effective interaction with professors. It's not a, let's say, huge course with hundreds and hundreds of students, like other, other bachelor, even at Polito. But you have uh, the possibility to interact efficiently with the professor. So that's it. These are my contacts. As I said, you can stop by our boot and the, the study plan and also some other gadgets. You can write to me. I'm open to answer to any question. Even now, we still have time. If you have also some curiosity about the subsea cable fiber optic, there Luigi can answer. So no question. Don't be shy. It's an opportunity to ask. Otherwise, we ask you questions <laughs> after the pop quiz. Yeah, the repeaters are very interesting because of that. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Can I use this? Oh, oh, oh. Yes, I guess. Yeah, the, there are repeaters uh, every 60, 70 kilometers because after 60, 70 kilometers, the light is you know, attenuated so, so much that you wouldn't be able to go uh, any further. Um, they look like torpedoes. They're like completely sealed, um, like steel, big steel cases, the size more or less of this desk. And they're completely sealed and they're this thick because they lie at the bottom of the sea. And that means hundreds of uh, atmospheres of pressure that would crush anything that wouldn't, wouldn't be this thick. Uh, but it's managed like that. And in, inside there are optical amplifiers. So the signal stays optical. It goes through a special fiber that actually amplifies the signal. Um, and power supply is interesting. I don't know if you noticed 
I don't know if we can put it back on, but the, the cables actually have a copper inner layer and there's power that flows through there. And power supplies are on both sides, on either sides of, of the ocean. Yeah, you can see it. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, one more, okay. Yeah, so the, what you see here as, as like this, this copper color, it's indeed copper and there's like power that, that it's a layer, the power flows through it and powers up all the repeaters. You have to power supply it at thousands of volts so that it, you know, it powers 6,000 kilometers, 10,000. The longest cable I think is 12,000 kilometers. It's a transpolar cable, very interesting technology. And if you calculate the number of amplifier is almost 100 because yeah. if you 1200, 12,000 kilometers divided by 60 or 70 kilometers. 150, depends 150 on the cable. amplifier all with the power supply by the end, because there is no way to, to get to the seabed in another way. Now, what I wanted to say is um, all of the other technologies that I show, I, I mean, they're super cool technologies, right? <laughs> it's not that uh, Wi-Fi, is, no, it's great, but of course its use is different. Wi-Fi is used in, uh, in your homes or over short distances in order to carry the last, not mile, the last 10 meters or 20 meters or 30 meters. Um, cell phones, we all know what they're like, you know, so the base stations, you have to be in, sort of in view almost of a base station, so it's local. And the satellites are super cool, but there's no way they would be able to carry, at least so far up to now, to carry that much throughput. Um, now there are these big mega constellations that are being uh, launched. I mean, Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, they want their pet, their, their toy constellation, each one of them. So hey, it's thousands of satellites, but still it looks like the total throughput wouldn't be comparable to cables. So the bulk of the data is still gonna be over optical fibers. Any more questions? Yes. Other questions? And by the way, you would learn about all these technologies in uh, ECE and then in the, mas in the masters that follow. No other questions about ECE? So I think you are here because you have a possible interest in this course, but obviously you are going also to follow other presentations. How many of you are from a technical institute, not a liceo? Okay. Curious because we have these two different population that are <laughs> coming to ECE, that is good because you, you mix them through the bachelor and you build an engineer. <laughs> I can just say that uh, the fact that it's completely taught in English sometimes is a barrier for uh, Italian students like, like you. But uh, there is the option to go through a first year in Italian. If you don't have uh, the English certificate, if you opt it, I don't suggest. Uh, my, my suggestion is if you can go through EC completely in English starting from the first year, it's a technical English, it's not so difficult. And also you start moving directly from the, since the first year in English, and then you'll move to the second and third. Uh, and uh, I, I have several success stories from students that graduated in the last year. We have almost more than 110, 120 already graduated students in the, in the, in the seven year that, uh, started beside the, the foreign student that uh, even then are not uh, English mother language. So they, they are complete, uh, successfully completing the program. So it's not uh, a major issue, a major barrier, the, the language, okay? Another question? So, yeah, so you are asking if uh, 
Yeah, so the question is about GNU radio that are some uh, program application that you can have. I don't know if you have, uh, so we, don't, we don't have specific lab on GNU radio. Obviously there are many foundational courses in digital transmission. There is a, a labs on applied signal processing lab and a lab in digital communication lab that at the moment they are not using that specific application. It could be, we use other uh, approaches. Uh, partially based on simulations because they are simpler. Uh, I personally did a course in digital communication laboratory using an SDR receiver, a software defined radio, very cheap receiver. It's a, a USB key that you can connect to a PC and it's a full uh, digital receiver. It, it was uh, designed as a DVB-T receiver, but then you can also use for other applications so you can uh, catch signal and then do some DSP on your own directly on um, a software level, obviously in offline processing. Other uh, more specific uh, lab courses are in the master because they require more, uh, let's say advanced knowledge. And so in the communication engineering master, you have this type of uh, courses and uh, labs. Yeah, in the new, yeah, actually the communication engineering is new as a name, but it starts from a previous degree. But uh, the peculiarity is that uh, the communication engineering, it will be a project-based uh, master degree. So we'll have uh, projects, very large, I mean, as a number of credits courses where you have to develop a complete project on your own or in a group of students. So it's not just lab, because the main difference between projects-based and lab-based in lab, you will follow the experience that are proposed to you. You have exactly, you know exactly what to do. In the project, you need to make decisions. And even the topic of the project can be decided and proposed by students. Obviously, we need to tell you the area that is, I don't know, you need to build. A, uh, there are actually two different projects. One is software-based, so to build a simulator. And the second is hardware based. You need to build something that works. Other questions? So if there are no other questions, we can close it here. And if you want to stop by our booth, we can get more information if you need it. Okay, thank you.